Now then, now then, how are we doing? I've been asked to do a video covering interior lighting and thinking about it, although there will be a brief bit of a module mentioned in this. Um, most of my videos recently have focused on modules or Curse of Strahd specific features. So I thought, yeah, we'll do something on indoor lighting. Uh, I will briefly mention the Blitz Community Lighting module, just because it adds some extra light types I like. But most of what I'm going to cover in this video is doable in base foundry, raw foundry, whatever you want to call it. I'm using the Curse of Strahd map, uh, Death House, as the example. There is a slight spoiler um, that I won't talk about, but you might notice on the map. So if you're going to be a player in Curse of Strahd, um, or you're going to show this to your players, just keep in mind, I'm going to be showing you the library from Death House. Um, when I'm mapping out interiors, I'm a big believer in not wanting to waste your time or repeating things or having to stop and make loads of changes mid-session. So what I prefer to do is I light my maps how they're going to be used at night time. And then... I just apply a lightness effect across the whole map. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm starting with Death House. As you'll see, it is very, very dark. It's very, very much nighttime. And I am going to put some light in, in this room. Um, I know there's no obvious light sources in here. We could say there's a big chandelier. I don't like great big blobs of light in the middle of a room. I get that sometimes it makes sense that a room would have a chandelier in, and that's fair enough, but I sometimes would rather dot a few small lights around. So I could spend time getting some item assets of, say, candles or lanterns and dropping them around the room. For the purposes of this video, we're going to pretend there is a candle resting on this harpsichord. What a way to get a slap. And I think, yeah, that's, that's all right for a candle. I'm going to position it where I want it to be, double click on the light, and I'm going to go with, this is where, you know, these are all the different lights I have on, because I have Blitz Community Lighting. For just a generic candle or lantern light, I like to go with Blurred Torch. And I'm going to pick my two lighting colours. Again, exactly what shade you go for depends on the sort of map you're going for, or the tone. Sometimes you want quite a warm looking light. Sometimes you don't want much. I think the default settings are a little, a little too energetic for just little lamp lights. So I'm going to increase the strength of the blur, decrease the speed of the animation, and maybe increase its intensity. And let's have a look at that. I'm happy with that as a little lantern light. So uh, what I like to do with my lights, oh, remember, right-click disables. I like to go and add a darkness threshold on them. For what I do, it doesn't matter too much um, because I normally either have my lights off or on. I don't tend to gradually gradient them. I'm going to just, I mean, I've put 0.15. It really doesn't matter. I, for me, for what I'm going to show you, I've got to put it anywhere along there. I'm going to put it as 0.1. And I'm going to update that light source. You can copy and paste lights. So if I were to you know, mouse over the light and copy it, and we'll say we had a light on the harp. I know it makes no sense. I just want to dot some lights around the room. A candle on this table over here, and a candle down there. Now, this is what it looks like. What I like about having a darkness threshold set on them is if my players came here at daytime, I'll just transition to daytime for a moment. The lights will drop off at a particular level of light because we have a darkness threshold. So if it was daytime, it seems stupid to me. If your players go somewhere in the middle of the day and the map is bright because it's daytime, but you can see obviously these little candles and torches flickering away it's kind of like why do you have cancel it it's daytime so having a darkness threshold on this can be daytime see i've not set one on this fireplace uh, this can be daytime and then as you're talking and you say oh you're remaining here and you're chatting to the burger master the duke account whoever you're talking about and night rolls in or maybe your players sneak back later when it's you know when it's dark 
You don't have to then go through and, oh, one second, guys, I was going to add some candles on. Yeah, there will be candles lit. You can have them set up beforehand, even if they're going there in the daytime. Because when I set the map to dark, when it reaches a certain point and hits that darkness threshold, all those lights kick in. So you can have a day and a night version of a map running at the same time without any, you know, any problems. If you decide that, yeah, okay, your players break into the, you know, to the house so late that the guards would have gone to bed and the candles would be off, then yeah, just right-click them and the lights are disabled. There are a large number of lighting types that we can go through with um, this module. If I were to go out into the hall, I could do the same. Um, I could also decide if you have a map that you want to be quite dark, but you have a room that you want to be universally lit, sometimes I do just drag the light effect enormously and say, here we go, a couple of lightings, you know, a couple of light effects, the room is now illuminated because I wanted universal lighting in this one room. I don't use that too often, but I, I've definitely seen people do that. When we get into this room, so I'm going to control the player. There's a couple of things in here I really like. So our fireplace is on with a larger light. You may be able to hear that I've also got a sound effect on for the fireplace, set to have volume easing. So as he gets closer, we'll be able to hear the crackle of the fire gets louder. Something I really like, um, I'm going to disable the fireplace. You will still hear a crackling sound, but I just want to show you something. Um, I really like the sense of, and this works better for sort of creepy buildings. I really like the sense of height in the room that comes from the style of these windows. Now, the way I've done this is by breaking, obviously, the windows up as invisible walls, but I also like to set an exterior wall not far outside now this won't work on every map because you might have a map where well there's gardens but players might want to be looking around works very well on a map like this it's broken up into different sections because what it then means is for the player they have this vertical sort of slant out and it makes this artificial impression of a lot of height now the light in here comes from a light source i've set up and it's called Audio Fade. The light animation is called Audio Fade. And the source I have set to be in from Soundboard by Blitz. What this means is when I play a sound from the Blitz Soundboard and the player is near this, I love this. The player is sort of creeping around the room. You might have, you know, you could easily have thunderstorm, you know, rain. Do I have, do I have a rain sound on here? Is there a rainy night sound? There's not. Damn. But let's say we have rain, you know, playing and he's exploring the building. You can go. And in timing with the sound, the lightning effect triggers. It's quite a long lightning effect. Now, I'm sure there'll be more than one amateur meteorologist out there who'll tell me how unlikely it is that thunder and lightning will happen at exactly the same time. But I imagine you'll, I hope you'll agree for your players, you'll agree that's pretty cool. Um, there's lots of different, I've seen people use, you know, um, for a roar and effect of a dragon, they want a lightning to come across the sky or something like that. But yeah, I just absolutely love that effect. The vertical windows won't work on every sort of map, obviously. Yeah, if it works better at ones that are up and to the left and right. Um, but yeah, as we move around, I really like just how eerie the verticality is that that gives. A couple of other things in here. Um, any of the lighting effects you can set to be a player's light effect. I've talked about the torch module before, so I won't go on about that at length. But you'll know that you can right-click a player and toggle whatever their default light effect is but setting the options for them. This player actually wields the Sun Sword. So what I want to do is go and change his lighting type to Sunburst, which is what I've used of a Sun Sword before. 
And now whenever he draws, he'll be walking around saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to draw the Sun Sword and make it shed its light. And that kicks out to the full extent of the Sun Sword. Um, obviously, the Sun Sword, can, you may or may not know, can shed light to different distances. There are macros you can set up that will configure um, that sort of vision and toggle to the most different light settings. Um, I don't think I'll go through all of the light settings that are enabled by Blitz. I'll go through a different one for that. But hopefully, as a quick guide to some interior lighting, you'll find that useful. That darkness threshold slide that I went through earlier is a real time saver for me because it means that every single indoor map I make, I map it as nighttime, and then I apply that daytime effect. This is also the reason where I found that I no longer, since I got into using Foundry, I no longer like nighttime maps that have forced light assets in. By that, I mean I don't like maps that are nighttime with torch sconces clearly lit and burning on the wall. Because if I make the map daytime, there's now these big fiery torch sconces. Um, someone showed me a very cool urban map. It was like a Star Wars map of... I'm very bad with Star Wars lore. The mad cartographer will kill me. But it was like a um, high-tech town. Oh, I like the one from the beginning of episode two where they're on the flying cars and there's bounty hunters and all that. All neon lights and things like that. Um, but they had sort of like I've got here all the light and streaks from the window. They were hard baked into the map. So for me now, all that makes me think is, well, I can't use it. I can't use this in the daytime ever now because it was forced lights and neon strip signs. Um, so yeah, it really affects how you look for maps in the future. Hope you found this useful. If there's anything else you were hoping to see with it, um, please let me know in the comments and I'll go and make an additional version. But as ever, thanks for watching and see you soon.